Okay, so let's settle down into our positions. It's a nice slow tutorial today with the dance music incorporated in so that you can get with the rhythm. I've always found that when people learn to crochet if they can just relax and get their mind onto other little things, maybe a little tune, it goes a lot smoother. You'll need a tapestry needle today so that you can weave in the ends at the end, an eight millimeter size L crochet hook today and we're gonna be using Bernat's Softy Chunky Yarn. You just need one ball. So you can choose many different colors of this yarn and the color that you see here is called Kimono Ombre and the color that you see here is called sea green. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna learn how to hold our yarn and our hook and do all of that first and then we're gonna get into making this project. So let's start right from the very beginning. Okay, so what we want to do is that we want to control the tension. So this is the amount of pressure that it goes into your hands. So what I want you to do is reach into the end of here. I've not done it yet so you're just gonna pull out a chunk of yarn that you can just reach and pull. Now this is called yarn barf if you've ever been on the social media. See all of this? And the thing about crochet, it goes so fast that you won't end up with this very often but when you pull this out it will just come down to one strand just like you see. So what I want you to do is back this out and just put it nicely on a table or sofa beside you and then you're going to be pulling into that into your project. So let's turn up our dance music and organize our yarn. Okay, so we're right at the very beginning of the strand. So let's learn how to hold the hook first, then how to hold the yarn. You're going to be noticing a lot of cool crochet hooks that you see on the shelf. Each one of the sizes of the shaft here determine the size of the stitch of the project that you're wearing. So the bigger the shaft, the bigger the stitch. So you can find different ideas on these shafts. Now this is called an ergonomic handle. It's designed for your hands so you can see that it will fit into your hands beautifully versus something that doesn't have that. It's a lot easier to hold and I think that you will crochet a lot faster with it. So if you're gonna invest in a crochet hook, go for the ergonomics. They're not that expensive and this is something that will save your hands in the long term. So you can notice that I'm naturally holding the yarn or the hook just like this. So I'm going to show you two methods and I'm gonna show you the pros and cons for each. Now you will notice that some people crochet like it's a pencil. So what they're doing is they're digging into the project and then doing their magic. I cannot crochet this way but my mom didn't teach me this way but you can see that people do it. In the long term though, let's back out the camera and see what's gonna happen. So when I do that, what's gonna happen is that when you crochet this way, this can provide extra strain to your wrist as you're moving all the way around in your stitches. Some people can control it really good but in the long term that you could end up with carpal tunnel syndrome if you crochet a lot and this is a common action. You can also get it from typing too much on your cell phone too. So what you have here is that you can learn this way. I'm not gonna teach you this way because in the old days the ladies used to crochet this, this way because it looked a lot more dainty when they crocheted but in today's uh, society it's more about comfort and longevity. They probably didn't know back in the old days that when you crochet this way that they would have severe uh, pains. So what I want you to do is I want you to switch the hook so that it's like this in your hand. So it's like resting and then the thumb is right here. You're just going to place your thumb. Noticing that I'm not just grabbing onto it like really mean. I'm just kind of letting it just rest in my hand and then I'm putting the, the thumb over top of the thumb rest that you see. So again, up close, I'm letting it rest in my hand nice and easily. It's just balanced and then I'm just putting my thumb right over top of the thumb rest. That is a flat section right here. If you're ever gonna invest in a crochet hook, make sure that it has a flat top so that when you put your thumb on there, it wants to st stabilize and balance versus a hook that may not have that. So we're going to be able to crochet in this formation and digging in and pulling out. What you can just do though is that you, I want you just to try it now. Let's turn up some dance music and I want you to rotate your hook. So just using your thumb, moving it like this and you're making the head of your crochet hook go back and forth. And two more, one more and done. So this allows you to do that. So you need to get into the motion of rotating your hook. So let's go back to the yarn now, now that we know how to hold the hook and see how we're gonna hold the yarn. 
how to hold the yarn is very subjective to whoever teaches you. So if you're ever learning for the first time, watch my method. It may not work for you but lots of people hold it differently and that's something that is personal. I want you to take the yarn strand. Notice that not, there's no knots right at this point and I want you to lay down your hand. You can, and if you don't have anything to lay it down, just hold it into the air. And what I want you to do is place the yarn strand right up over top of your hand just like this. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna open up your pinky. So let's try that again. So open up your pinky like that. And what's gonna happen is that this here is going to control how much yarn goes to your project at one time. But we also have another finger that is also gonna control the tension and it's this one. So this one and this one are the keys to success. So what about the other two and the thumb. So what you can just do, let's just practice now. Take your middle finger and your thumb and put it together like this. Okay, so let's just try that again. So move your hand up and pinch. Try it again. Pinch. What I want you to concentrate is that this finger here only ever helps you with your project but never is used throughout the whole thing. So just pinch. So now let's position our yarn into our hands. So let's position our hand down and let's begin to feed the yarn into the hand. I want you to open up your pinky. So open up the pinky and you can move this finger out if you want to as well. And I want you to just lay it down. I want you just to raise your hand slightly and let that strand fall underneath the pinky. Okay, let's try it again. So lay it down, open up and just move your pinky so that it's over top of that strand. I'll hold here. Let's turn on the dance music. So match your hand to my hand on camera. Are you ready? Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to let it fall down like this. Now what I want you to do is that I want you to rotate your hand. Remember that pinching that we did? So what I want you to do is that I want you to pinch this yarn strand here. So coming down, so just rotate your hand and pinch. Okay, try it again. So it's down and just hold it with this hand until you got it and then pinch. And I want you to close this here so that this is a nice violin string. It's tight but it's not crazy tight. Just watch again. So turn and pinch. See this finger? It's up in the air. Why is it up in the air? Watch what happens when I push it down. Oh, uh oh, no more violin string. Up, violin string. This is controlling how much pressure there is in your crochet project. So let's try this up. So and three more. Two more one more and you're done. So this is going to control your tension. So do you think that you got a knack of it? Well let's try. So the first thing that we need to do is get yourself started with a slip knot. This is the very first knot. Let me tell you about the knots. Crochet is really basically a version of knot tying. So when people think oh it's a ladies thing, it's not a ladies thing, it's a human thing. In order to think about fishermen by way back in the day they were using knots. Crochet is a form of knotting. So we have to start off with our first slip knot which then connects everything into it. So to do that I want you to lay your hand down like this and I want you to point across the room and using your pointer finger point across the room. Noticing that I'm keeping my thumb up. Okay, so let's try it again. So point across the room and point across the room and point across the room. I want you to take this now and just rotate it so it's more even with you just like it is on screen with you right now. I want you to take this yarn strand and coming up from underneath Okay, so notice that I just put my hand up underneath, uh, over, over top of the yarn. Point and take this yarn strand and wrap it around your finger twice. Try it again. So point and wrap. So over, under, over, under. Okay, so over, under, over, under. One more time. 
And now what I want you to do with the point with the fingers just push everything together like that. Watch. So it's open. Close your hand and trap both of the strands into your hand. One more time. So just trapping. Now this is the back of your hand. This is the forward. Noticing that I do not have a crochet hook in my hands. I don't need it yet. So we're gonna play leapfrog and we're gonna jump this one over top of this one and then this new one over top of the other one. I'll show it to you a few times. So let's turn up our dance music and let's begin to rock this. So we're gonna go up and over and then pinch the next one and go over and then that's it. That is your slip knot. Okay, so watch. Over. And the new one up and over. And that becomes your slip knot. Last time, pinch over and over. Now that you've gone over, what I want you to do is place your crochet hook into that loop. So place your into the loop and slide it onto your hook. You got that? So now we're going to position the yarn back into our hand over here and then show you how to start this beginning chain. So let's begin. I want you to lay it everything down on the table and I want you to start getting position. So pick this up. Okay, so pick this up and slide your hand underneath keeping up your pinky so that it slides underneath your pinky. Okay. There you go. So I want you to get close to the crochet hook. So moving closer and I want you to close your pinky. So see the pinky? Close it and you should be able to pull on it like this. If you're wearing rings this may not pull. So just be very conscious of that. So that is controlling your tension. Now remember the pinching that we did. So rotate your hand and I want you to pinch underneath this knot here. So pinch. Like that. See how this finger is up? This is your violin string. Let's try it again. So just rotate your hand and pinch. One more time. So going in, pinch. So now we're going to create a chain that is your starting chain and in this particular pattern there's 42 chain, or 44 chains. Remember that the hook one that you just started with never ever counts as one. Does this ever count as one? The answer is no. So we're going to chain 44. How to chain is that watch what I do. Your project is not gonna go anywhere. Just relax and let's turn up a little bit more music so that you can relax as you enjoy the process but let me show you first. We're going to take the hook and see how it's pointed up so that that pointy thing is up. You see that? And I want you to rotate underneath the back Okay, underneath and I want you to rotate it forward and I want you to pull through. So see how it's facing down? The only way to get this out of that existing loop is to have it straight down. Like that. So that was one. So I want you to let this go, repinch the new one and do it again. And we're gonna count these as we go. So that was, we've done number one. So rotate back and scoop it up. This is called yarning over and rotate it underneath and pull through. Okay, and then repinch the new one, rotate under and pull through. So let's turn on the dance music now and let's begin to do. You need to count a total of 44. I'm going to do 44 with you on camera while we have the dance music playing. Currently we have three done. So we have to go all the way to 44. So let's begin all the way to 44. So let's turn up our dance music now.
So we have now 44 here on here and what we need to do is that we need to create a, a circle and in order to create the circle we need to make sure that this is not twisted up in any weird kind of way. So let's begin to join this end to this end to create a permanent circle but we have to untwist that first. So we need to untwist this chain so just follow it up and just, just follow it so it looks like it's flat and keep on following it and as you follow and pinch it'll just sort itself out. Okay so it should be nice and a flat section. So what I need you to do is that we are going to then just create the chain, uh, the circle. So in order to create that circle what I want you to do is pick up the project and insert the hook into the very first chain. So just right in and put the yarn onto your hand. So just scoop it with your pinky up and trap it and then pinch and pull through and through. So you're pulling through all those loops and now you suddenly have that beautiful circle that you were looking for. So just get that done and then we're gonna begin round number one. So we're going to begin our first round. So let's get our yarn back into our hands. So just scoop and pinch. Now we're going to chain three. In the rules of crochet usually chain three when you start a round is a double crochet which I'll show you that in just a moment. So let's just chain three for, to start. So one, you already know how to chain, two and three just like that. Now you're going to notice that on this chain there is what looks like a back of a serpent spine. So do you see it's like one bump that is up there? That's what you want to play into in order to go all the way around. So we're gonna come to the immediately to the first bump. Do you see it's right in kind of in the center of two sections right there and what we're going to do is double crochet. Double crochet is used in most crochet projects. So what we're going to do is you're gonna scoop up like you were doing like a chain and you're gonna keep it and turn it over and keep it on. Now the chain one right where my thumb is right here is where we want to slide our hook into. So the first time it's gonna be really hard for you but it gets easier. So you're just gonna scoop up into that loop like that. So we're going to then just scoop it up and keep everything in position just like you see. So now you're gonna come back and you're going to wrap the hook and pull it through the first loop which is on the chain and pull through and now there's three loops left. You're going to wrap the hook and pull through two and wrap the hook pull through two. That is a double crochet. So your next serpent spine if you follow it see it's right there and here and here and here. So the, the harder you are, are on the project for tension the harder this is. So you wanna be nice and loose. So let's begin to do that again. So you're going to wrap the yarn first and turn it over and stick your hook into the serpent spine on the, on the chain. It's always a little tough when doing the chain work. So if you're struggling right now it's okay. So just use your fingers if it's a little tight, mine's a little tight and just pull it onto the hook and then wrap the hook and pull through that one and then wrap and pull through two and wrap and pull through two. So where's the next one? It's pointing straight up. Do you see that? It's ready for you. So it's just wrap the hook and going into the next chain. See once you do this chains and you're starting to go in the back spine, the back spine for the next one will appear next. So you're just gonna wrap and pull through that one and wrap and pull through two and wrap and pull through two. This is called yarning over and technically in books if you're ever looking. So yarning over, going into the next chain, go into that serpent spine okay pull through that serpent spine then pull through two and two and you keep doing that all the way around. So what we're gonna do is turn on some dance music and then you can begin to work all the way around. It won't be for the whole round but we'll just get you started. So just follow what you see. 
So wrapping and through. So I'm coming up near to the end of the round. Now because this one does not have any multiples meaning that there's not more than one stitch working together to create a pattern is that you don't need to worry about making sure that you have your right count because it simply all works together. Now I'm in the very last one that I had gone into or that I started with because this one here do you see how it's going into this one? So what we're going to do is create a slip stitch in order for you to join it. So just count it up one, two, three. So let's do that one, two, three and slip into that stitch. So notice that now that the stitch has two strands on top, one and two. And yarning over, pulling it through and through. Like that. So if you need to reverse the video, now's the time to do it if you missed that. So I'll just show it to you one more time. Okay, so it's not joined. So count one, two, three, the third one. Slip your hook into that stitch. It's got two strands on top and yarning over, pulling it through and through. And that just joined the two pieces together. Noticing that when you join them, it should be flat. So if you have any kind of weird twisting, um, then that won't work for this particular project. Okay, so make sure it's nice and flat. We're now going to begin round number two, which is a nice easy round. So let's begin round number two. Round number two and three are going to be used uh, together each time. So when you're doing round number two, this is what it looks like. You're going to start off with and you're going to yarning over and pull through one loop. So this is chain one. And in the same one that you did the join, I want you to single crochet. So we've taught you how to double crochet. Now we're gonna do single. So you're just gonna not wrap the hook first but stick your hook into the stitch. Do you see that? It's right where it's joining. Just right there. And go straight back. And you'll have two strands on top. So yarning over, pulling it through both strands. And now you have two loops on the hook. So yarning over, pulling it through two. That's a single crochet. We'll keep showing it to you again. So come to the next stitch that you see here. Do you see that? See there's two strands on top. Though together those two strands make one stitch. So just insert in and now it should be easier yarning over through and then pull through two. You get it? So just going to the next stitch, yarning over pulling through Pulsar 2. I'll show it to you one more time and then we'll start some dance music. Okay, let's kick it up. Let's start and go all the way around.
Okay, so we're coming all the way back around. You can see where we started is right here. It looks different than this side, doesn't it? So you've got two stitches left. How do I know that? Because see how this one is sitting underneath the one that you started? These two are not left. These are, are left to be done. So we're just gonna single crochet those two and then we're going to join it with a slip stitch to the first top of the single crochet. So this is the first stitch. So just insert in, yarning over, pulling through and through to join it. See how it closed it in nicely? So let me show it to you again. So to close it, you're going to come to the first single crochet, going in, pull through and through. So now we're gonna position ourselves into round number three. So rounds number two and three repeat itself. So three is going to be chaining up three. So one, two, three. And now we're going to double crochet. So when you double crochet that counts as this first one that you see. See how it's sitting on top of it? So you come to this one right here and you're going to double crochet. So wrap the hook going into the stitch, pull through, pull through two, and two. So that's exactly what you did down here. So let's do the next one. So wrap into the stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and keep doing that. So wrap and pull through two and two. So I'm gonna show you two more and then we're going to start our dance music again. Okay, let's kick it up and let's go all the way around for double crochet. Okay, so we're just now back around and we're now going to come into your last stitch. So see this one is coming into there. It's not a stitch that's left. It's only the one right before it. And now we're going to join it with a slip stitch. So count up three. So one, two, and three. And the third one is the one that you'll slip stitch with. Pulling it through and through. So what we're going to do is that we're going to continue so you can see single crochet and doubles. These are the doubles. So your piece of paper that you have is remember is eight and a half inches. So you want to do it so that this is a total of eight inches tall. So if you don't have a tape measure with you all you can just do is lay it down on your, your pattern or any kind of regular paper and just don't go all the way to the edge and then therefore that's the height of your cowl. To begin your next section then we're going to do single crochet. So round number two and three two and three and you will end up with a double crochet round as your last round for your eight inches. To do number two, chain up one again and then single crochet into the top of the first one. So noticing that the single crochet goes in the top of the first one but when you chain three and double crochet you immediately jump to the next one. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way around once again and then you're going to meet me back here in just a moment and then we're going to just get you back onto double crochet and then you're going to repeat this idea going all the way to the top of the eight inches and then I'm gonna show you with a tapestry needle how to finish it off when you're done. So I'm coming all the way back to where it started and then you're going to just join to the top of the first single crochet with the slip stitch. Now you're gonna start round number three again which is a double crochet round so you can see that these are now matching each other. So chain up three and then jump to the next one 
and you're going to double crochet yourself all the way around. So I want you to do this all the way around and you're going to do eight inches or whatever you're satisfied for the height and then when I come back I'll show you how to join it again but then I'm gonna show you how to finish off your ends and leave the rest of the project for you to be able to get this done. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just double crocheting into the last one and then what I need to do is that I need to join it to the top. So count one, two, and three and the third one is where you're going to join and then that's it. So you're gonna continue to single crochet, double, single, all the way till you get eight inches. Once you're happy with the height of this, what you're going to do is just grab your scissors and just cut your yarn strands so it's a little bit extra long and I want you to pull through that loop. So I'm gonna finish, show you how to finish this off. So it's a little small right now if you were to actually wear it. So now grab your darning or your tapestry needle and feed that strand through. And I want you to turn it around and you're looking at the good side. So if you're wearing it, this is the side you're looking at. So I want you just to take the darning needle and go up into the stitch work on the underside staying on the back side of the project. Okay, so this is, your neck would be right next against this. So when you turn it over, you should not really see much of that needle and I want you to pull through. So just pull through and when you pull through, I don't want you to pull it so that it warps the project. So just keep it so it looks like it's part of the project. And then I want you then to go in a different path but in the other direction from what you just came. And then finally go back in the other direction a third time. This will never fall out on you if you go back and forth three times. And once you do that, you can safely trim your project down or your, your yarn strand down and you'll never see the end of that strand ever again. It's gone. So then you take the first strand that you started with and you do the same thing. Now it's gonna be smaller for you. Chances are it will be. So again, stick into the back side of the project and just going through the yarn strands on the back side. Back side meaning the inside of the cowl. So just go through once. You don't wanna warp it so just keep it nice and easy going and then go back through a second time. So we start, it's called the slip knot so it's already kinda knotted so you don't really need to worry about getting it too detailed into there. And pull through. So I'm only going through twice in that one and then I can just safely trim it down and therefore you never see the beginnings. So you will always notice a little seam line when you're wearing this. So chances are you put that in the back but if you look at the rest of it you can see that you did a really good job. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Your Inspirations. This is a special dance version. We hope that you've enjoyed your dancing today. This weekend. Bye-bye.